Hey everyone, it's Ashley here for your next stamp and I am back with another episode for the Stamp Create Repeat series. So today I'm going to be making these really cute little thank you shaker tags. I'm going to be using Prismacolor pencil crayons to color up those super cute little chameleons. So I'm going to hold up each of the little shaker tags here so you can see them up close. And they are shaky and just really bright and colorful. So this one is the blue one and this is actually a tag that came just as a tag itself and I turned it into a shaker tag by using another die. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Here is the pink one, the green one, and I just love the little shaky bits in there and the orange one. And these are a nice big size of shaker tags, so it's perfect for adding on larger images. So I'm gonna show you the products that I'll be using for this project. I'm gonna be using the Your Next Stamp Black Olive Ink, and I love this ink so much. It is so vibrant, like look how dark and crisp that is. Love it so much. I'm also gonna be using these wire snips, and these are also one of my new favorite scrapbooking like crafty tools. These are the Your Next Stamp gumdrops, and I'm going to be using two packs today. This one is the Magical Pastel gumdrops, and I use the yellow here on the orange one and the pink on that little pink tag. I also use this set of gumdrops. This is the Enchanted Forest gumdrops, and I use the green ones and also those blue ones, and they are so sparkly, and they just add some nice dimension to the front. For that cute chameleon, it came from this One in a Chameleon stamp set, and he is so cute, and that's also where the thanks sentiment came from. It does also have coordinating dies which you can purchase separately. So there's that little guy. He's so cute holding up a little peace sign. This is the tag die that I'm going to be using. It's the Cool Tag 4 die set and I love it so much. You get four different tag sizes and then I'm going to be using this reversed peekaboo scallop die set and I'm going to use that to turn this die tag into a shaker card. And I just think it's really cute because it has the scallop kind of going inwards. And I've never seen a die like that before. So I'm really excited to show you guys how I did this today. So um, each of these little tags, there's four of those. And then there's three of the little confetti sizes. So I'm going to be using today my Prismacolor pencil crayons to color up these little chameleons. I usually use Copics and a few of you have asked if I'll show some other types of mediums for coloring up my stamped images. So today I'm going to use the Prismacolor pencil crayons and so I'm just holding each of the little chameleons up close so you can see the coloring on them. So let's get started with the process video. So first up I am stamping out that little chameleon and he totally reminds me of Pascal from Tangled the Disney movie. I love that movie so much and this little guy is just so cute like his little fingers Doing the little peace sign is just precious So now I'm taking the coordinating dies and I'm using my wire snips to cut those out And I was just showing even that little splotch of paint that's on the stamp set It also has a coordinating die there So I'm just using some post-it note tape to die cut that out And I'm just going to show you one of them up close here and then I will cut the rest of them out like editing magic so this is the Prismacolor pack that I'm going to be using. It has 36 pencils and it's a really awesome kit to get started with Prismacolor pencil crayons and I can link that below for you guys as well. So I'm going to be using the Prismacolor number 989, 912, and 909. So I'm going to get started with the darkest color and I'm just going around and adding a thick dark line. So I'm pushing hard to get a nice thick line and then I'm just going off of that line doing kind of like a circle motion to, and doing a very light hand of color. That way it's going to make almost like a gradient of going from darker to a little bit lighter. And I'm just adding on all the little bits of shadowing that I want there. So I'm doing that on the whole little chameleon there. So just pushing hard right on the line and like off of the line a little bit and then just light circle motions. And that's just gonna add a nice gradient when I add the next pencil crayon on top of it. It's gonna make it kind of like blend into a different color than both of those original colors because it's gonna combine them into a new color. So now I'm taking the medium green color there and I'm just doing a light um, circle motion on top of all of the space that had that green and then doing it a little bit further over. And it's always best when using Prismacolors or any type of pencil crayons to do a light coloring first. You can always add on more layers of color but you can't go back from the dark layers. So it's always good to use like a gentle hand and do it really lightly. 
So I'm just finishing off with that color and then I'm gonna take the lightest green color and you can see I left a little bit of shading where the darkest, or excuse me, where the lightest color is gonna be and I'm just blending that all out and making a nice little gradient into that color. And I apologize the camera moves a little bit. I don't usually use Prismacolor pencils and you do have to push harder when doing it. So my camera does shake a little bit and I do apologize for that. Hopefully it won't be too bad. And so I'm just holding him up. He is so cute. And then I'm taking my black jelly pen to add on his little eyes there. And then I also do the little dots on his nose. And also there's a few dots on this image that I go over. And you can use the jelly pen on top of the pencil crayon. So um, it's still, you can add in your little accents. So now I'm just taking some orangey colors there. And again, I'm doing the darkest color with this dark orange. And then kind of doing a little bit of a lighter layer coming off of that. And I had a lot of fun doing fun colors of the chameleon because chameleons can change colors. So I thought it'd be fun to do some bright different colors for the chameleon. And I do color these up all the same, like same type of um, technique doing the darkest portion. And there is tons of different ways to use your Prisma colors and add the shading, but this is just the way that I'm doing it. So I thought I'd share that today. And I hope you guys like seeing the Prisma colors for a different type of medium. And if you guys wanna leave comments in the comment section, letting me know what mediums you'd like to see me use, I'm happy to use all different types. I have quite a few of the different mediums. I have the Zig Pen. Ink Tense pencils, I have the Erogitin pencils, Spectrum Noir markers, and I have like watercolors and stuff like that. So if there's any type of medium that you guys really wanna see, I'm happy to color it up using the mediums that you guys like to use as well. Copics are definitely my favorite, but I know not everyone has Copics. So if there is a type you wanna see, definitely leave it in the comments section. So I'm just finishing up this little guy and now I'm gonna be using the lighter color pencil and I like to just leave a little bit of white space so it's just really has that nice little highlight there of the lightest color. And I really like this little orange guy, he's so cute. And this would totally be cute too if you added a little bow on it, I think that would be precious. And then I'm taking my black jelly pen and just adding those little bits of highlights. So there he is, and now for the next one, I'm going to do a pink color. So I'm just picking out three pink colors from this set, and this set really does have a nice variety of colors in it. Um, I think to get started, if you wanted to get these type of pencil crayons, it would be a good set to begin with. And now I'm just adding the darkest portion for this little guy. So same as the other ones then as well, I'm just adding the darkest portion where I want the dark shading to be and then little slow circles of light pencil coloring just around it. And I really like the pink one, he's so cute or she is cute, either or. And then there's some two tiny dots on the little chameleon and for both of those I just use the darkest color to color that part in to give it a little bit of accent. And then I'm gonna go in with the second color. And when I do the second color, I'm just going to go again over top of the first color and start to blend it out and then go beyond that color so you get a gradient going from the darker into this little bit of lighter color. And you don't have to use three pencil crayons, that's what I'm just doing for these chameleons, but you could use, if you just have two colors, you can also use white as a color and then you can blend it out using the white. And I will show you that when I do the blue chameleon. And you can use the white jelly pen on top of the Prismacolor pencil crayons as well. So if you do wanna add any bit of dimension or little accents on your image, you can do that as well and it will work on top of the pencil crayon. So now I'm just taking my lightest color and blending it all out. And then using the black jelly pen just to add those little dimension dots and the nose and eyes. Now on to the blue one. So I'm using PC910, 992, and 938. So this time I'll show you how to do the coloring with only two colors and then white to blend those out. There was only two kind of like tealy blue colors in this pencil crayon kit. So I'm just using the white to kind of broaden these colors so that I have three to choose from. So again, just around the outside with the darkest color. 
And I just think that those little two fingers held up in the peace sign is just such a super cute little image. I love this guy. And then I'm going to take the next color and go over top of the light pencil crayon that I did and extend it a little bit further. And I am pushing harder when I'm doing this layer. And I'm just going to leave a tiny bit for the white, less than I did before, I'd say, because it's going to be harder to get a blend with the white pencil crayon, but I can get somewhat of a blend. So I've left a small bit there, and then I can take the white pencil crayon and just blend it all out, and it makes it look really smooth and almost like I have a third light blue color, when really I'm just blending it with the white. So there is the third little guy. And then I'm going to take my black jelly pen and I'm going to do the eyes. That just gives it some dimension. It just makes it really pop. And he is done. So I'm going to take this Cool Tag 4 die and the Reverse Peekaboo Scallop die set. And I'm going to take the largest tag and I'm taking my die snips there and just snipping it apart. And this die is really nice. It's a nice big squarish size and so you can put really big you can put really big sentiments and also big images on there. And then I'm taking the largest size from that other die, the reversed scallop die, and I'm setting out some foam in each of the colors. You could do any color you like, but I found it nice to do matching. So I am cutting out one of these tags, and the other side is double-sided, so I'm going to cut out another one in a different color. So I'm just flipping it over and doing one on polka dot and one on striped paper. And that way you're going to get more colors because we're going to do a shaker card. So when we cut out the front tag, you're going to be able to see through to the tag behind it. And so that tag is going to be a different color, which will be nice. So then this is the fourth tag, the blue one. So I've got my striped and now my polka dot. Then I'm going to cut out the foam bits. So you'll need to cut out two of each of the tags with the foam. And I am cutting two for each and in the matching color. So there is one and the second one there. And I'm just removing that little piece so that I'll have the spot to put the ribbon in or the twine. And now I'm doing a pink one and my second pink one. And then I'm just going to do the blue. So again, two of the blue. And the reason I do two is that you can get a nice dimension so it gives more room for the items that you put inside to shake about. I'm just showing you how cute that little guy looks there and trying to decide which one I want to be the top and the bottom. I choose the stripe one because I think that the sentiment will show up on it better than on the polka dot one. So I'm setting the four polka dot ones aside and I'm going to take all of these striped ones and put this tag or excuse me, put the reverse scalloped die down and see how nice it is. You could leave it just like that if you didn't want to make it into a shaker card. But again, I'm making shaker tags, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So now I'm putting that one down. And again, it's just cutting out that cute little scalloped. And the way to do it is just to kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect where you set it on there, but I tried to put it closer to the bottom so I would have room on the top for the sentiment. Now I'm doing the same thing with the tags. Now I, or excuse me, with the foam. So I took both pieces of foam and put them on top of each other and then cut it out. So again, I'm taking both pieces of the foam tags and putting that scallop on top of it and it will cut through to make this shaker component. As I was doing this, I realized I could remove the sticky back because it's adhesive and then I will have one less step to do later. So I'm just taking off the adhesive putting the two tags together and running it through. And now my favorite part where I set everything out, I'm going to put the sentiment thanks on all of these. A lot of the different sentiments on here will fit. There's a nice amount of space on the top of the tag there, but I'm gonna do the thanks one and I'm using that black olive Your Next Stamp ink and it is absolutely amazing. It is by far my favorite ink that I have ever used and I have quite a few different black inks. This one is hands down my favorite. Just as you can tell just by looking at this how dark and crisp that looks. It just looks amazing. So I'm putting thanks on all of those there. And now 
I had not attached these when I was doing the die cutting to two of these foam pieces. So I'm just adhering these together. So I'm just getting off that sticky bit and then I have that part done. Now I'm gonna take my little plastic wrap and I get these from the dollar store. They're for packaging up flowers or gift baskets. And I'm gonna use this to add on the middle plastic piece. So I'm just putting adhesive around the outside and then I'm just taking my scissors and trimming this off. Now you could take the tag die and put it through your die cutting machine and do four of those with that. But I just thought it was easier just to add the adhesive, put it on and just trim around it. So it's totally your preference how you wanna do this part of it. And I am just trimming it a little bit below where that little hole is that you'll put the ribbon or twine through just so that it will fit through there. And this one is really easy to add the adhesive to. There's lots of room around the outside and you can easily add the adhesive and pop on that little acetate piece. And then I'm just doing the blue one here. And trimming around. And then I'm going to take these little foam pieces and I'm going to put them onto their coordinating color and these were really easy to put together as well. So I'm just taking off the adhesive, adding them on there. And because again, it's kind of more like a chunkier tag, I just found all of the steps were a lot easier because you could just, um, it didn't make the foam as wiggly and like frail because it's so thick, the foam didn't lose its shape as much for some reason. So I'm just taking these little pots and I got these at Michael's. They just have different types of confetti in it. So I'm using just each of the different coordinating colors. So the first ones were little shaped confettis and now these are just little circled confetti sprinkles. And now I'm just gonna put some adhesive around this top part of the tag and add it on. And I'm just shaking it about and the Foam does come up off the side just a tiny bit, but I just trim it off so that it is all the same. And then on the back there, you can add a message or a note for whoever you're giving the thank you tag for. And I get a lot of questions how I use my tags. There's so many different ways that you can use them. I tie them on to wine bottles. I tie them on to gift bags, like hanging from the side. It just looks so cute. You can tie them around like if you're giving flowers you can tie it around like the bottom part of the flowers with twine there's just so many ways that you can gift these and I know that whenever I've gifted them people have always really loved them a lot so now I'm just doing the last blue one here and adding that part on and they just shake so nicely and they're so cute I like how it has such a big opening for the shaker bit and now I can add on my little chameleon. So I'm putting on the little blue guy, the little orange one. And as I said before, this fits a nice big sized image. So for any stamp sets that you have where you have a nice big image, these are perfect. And the pink one. And now I'm gonna take some of the Your Next Stamp gumdrops and I'm using the green ones there. That is the Enchanted Garden set. And then I'm gonna use that same set for the blue ones. And then I'm gonna use the Magical Pastel ones for the pink and these yellow ones. And these are all sparkly gumdrops. They're so gorgeous and they just add something really nice and dimensional to the front. And then for each of them, I go and add another of the little size to the top there just to kind of center it out a little bit. And now I'm gonna take some twine and I'm taking twine in the matching colors. I'm taking a lot and I am tripling it up and then putting it through and cutting off the end. So it has a lot of twine and then I can add a bow onto the end of the tag when I make it. So I'm just doubling it up and tripling it up and then trimming off the side. And whenever I make projects where I have multiple colors like this, I always ask you guys, which is your favorite color? So please leave a comment in the comment section. It is my favorite part of making videos like this where I have coordinating colors. And please tell me, is your favorite the green one, orange one, blue, or pink? I think my favorite is the pink one, but I also really love the blue one and the orange one. And okay, I totally love the green one too. They're all just so cute. So I'd love if you left a comment telling me which one is your favorite. So thank you as always so much for watching. If you haven't, I would love if you head over to the Your Next Stamp YouTube channel and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.